one of the greatest unifying moments in history. So now it's not a circle, this is a sphere. Check this out. That's, that's your tuition. Yeah, sphere. And the question is, how is the surface area related to its volume? And I will, your homework assignment will be to use the same argument to prove that the volume has to be one-third times the surface area times the radius. Like here it was area is one-half, it's this one-half, it's one-half times the circumference times the radius. This is analogous. Volume is one-third of surface area times the radius. You will prove it by a similar argument with pyramids instead of triangles. You'll fill in the details. So that's, let's say that's not a paradigm shift. Okay? And so volume will equal some mysterious number tau times r cubed. That becomes clear when you consider cubes and so on. But how does this get the number pi? And yes, you know that it's four-thirds pi. Pi again, that's insane. You agree with me? That it's the same pi from the circle and, and its circumference? That's pff, no way. Put yourself in the frame mind of a person who doesn't know this. And you were asked to uh, bet on the fact that the part you don't understand is the part we didn't understand with the circle. And it's the same number pi. That's just mind-boggling. And here's how Archimedes did it. So okay. consider a cer a, the sphere. Consider a cylinder of the same diameter and the same height. And we're going to compare their volumes. There will be some details and you'll fill them in later. In fact, we'll consider half a, half a sphere and half a cylinder like that. So the cylinder is actually kind of square. Okay, and here's what we're going to do. I mean, I don't know how you come up with an idea like this. You cut out a cone. You cut out a cone like this and you just look at the shape that's remaining. Can you visualize the shape? You take the cylinder and you remove the cone. And the, okay, that's good. So I will now prove to you and also realize that if you understand circles and the areas of circles, you understand the volume of a cylinder because it's just the area of the circle times the height. So that's good. Archimedes had that in his pocket. You can also understand volumes of cones. That will be your homework. But, it's, but the volume of any conical shape like that is one-third the area of the base times the height. So you understand that also. So Archimedes knew the shape of the remaining part. And I will show and I will prove to you that the area volume, if I've been saying area, I regret it. I'm talking about volumes here. That the volume of the part where you take a cylinder and you remove the cone is the same as the volume of the sphere. And it's actually not so hard to see. Draw a vertical line here and here. And just introduce a coordinate z, just our familiar coordinate z. And so at this value z, what's the radius of the circle? Uh, you know, this is the circle I'm talking about, of this slice. What's the area of this slice? When I slice the sphere at z, well, it's Pythagoras' theorem. If the radius is r, then this radius right there, the square of that radius, is r squared minus z squared. You guys are with me? That's the radius squared of this slice. Okay, great. And so what's the area of the slice? Well, it's just pi times this. 
very simple. There's that area. And now you carry the slice over here, and you're talking about the area of the slice that you encounter in this configuration of this part that we're studying, cylinder minus cone. And it's an annulus. It's an annulus like this. It's an annulus where the outer radius is the radius of the cylinder, and that, of course, is R. That's the outer radius. And the inner radius, you will realize that this is a 90 degree angle, so it's like a 45 degree cone. The inner radius is Z. A few little details to fill in. And so the area of this annulus is R squared minus Z squared times pi. Well, because it's pi r squared minus pi z squared. So these slices have identical areas, whether you're looking at the sphere or you're looking at the cylinder minus the cone. And Archimedes said that if these, that if each slice, that if the slices have identical areas, then the shapes have identical volumes. Is that intuitively clear? Okay, that's great. So the volumes are the same. Well, what's the volume of this? Well, the volume of this is pi r squared, that's the area of the circle, uh, minus the cone, which is one-third pi r squared. So it becomes two-thirds pi r squared. And that's just half of the sphere and half of the cylinder. We want the whole thing. So you just need to multiply it by two. And so this is four-thirds pi r squared. So that's the incredible breakthrough. And also uses ideas of calculus, which is slicing, uh, slicing a shape into what we would now say infinitely many slices. But you don't have to say infinity. You can just sort of accept some principles without saying infinity, or you can say infinity, whatever it takes for you to get used to using these methods and moving forward. Just always move forward. Talk about Archimedes. Talk about moving forward. My goodness, so much to learn from that great individual. Okay, so you know what the next thing he did? He said, now let's take a parabola. You know, this formula pi r squared is squaring the circle. Not really, because we don't know what pi is. Um, we don't know what pi is, so we haven't really squared it but we compartmentalize the part we don't know how to deal with and call it pi. And once we've compartmentalized it, at least we've classified things we don't understand. So he calculated this area. So I still really want to do it because it's so beautiful. So I'll do it next time. Uh, it's so beautiful and so worth just being familiar with it. Okay? Uh, yeah, and he proved that it's two-thirds of the area of this triangle. So he squared the parabola. And this, what's so nice about the two-thirds, is that it's not like pi, right? It's more like four, right? So it's a true squaring. He truly squared the parabola. Circle proved to be impossible to square, so he advanced human thought as far as it could be advanced at that time. And that's the furthest we had gone for, uh, you know, until, 2,000 years later. So that's, <laughs> try doing something that will only be surpassed in 2,000 years. Um, but with parabola, he truly squared it. And just like with two circles, you can't avoid infinities and subdivision. So we're going to do it.